Okay, we're going to cover part two now of the rest of the class. In the first part, we talked kind of more about the internal external structure, how we use it and so forth. In the second half here, we're going to talk about how we can uh, present our data and uh, ways in which we analyze the data. So first up, we're going to look at the different types of analytics that you can kind of correlate to what we spoke of earlier, our text analytics, our sentiment analytics, our image analytics, our video analytics, voice analytics, and data mining. Okay, so when we look at our text analytics, it's when we take the value from a large um, quantity of unstructured data, okay, and we throw it all into kind of this big sorter and we come out and for a small company like ours, wine wags and crafts, we're the sorter. So that obviously takes a lot of time and energy to do when you're a massive company like Amazon, you've got Hadoop or you've got these big data um, machines that will help you uh, process that and develop and create algorithms. So again, scale, remember, keep, uh, keep our, our uh, thoughts to the relevance of how we use them. Um, whether you're a small company or a larger company or somewhere in the middle, you can always, you know, again, work to scale with what you, you think your organization would do. So our sentiment analysts, uh, our sentiment is um, when we try to pull the thoughts out of words, videos, text, data, script, anything, right? So um, the example that I like to use is if... Um, third baseman on my summer team makes an error and uh, just lazy, doesn't get down on the ball, goes through him, uh, walking in the dugout, one of his teammates says, bad teammate by making this comment, but the teammate says, great play, Joe. So if I'm just reading that sentence and not hearing any of the inflection, it's I would think that Joe made a great play, but by seeing it and being able to analyze that and putting that with the comment that I heard, I realized that, oh, wait, that doesn't mean good play. That means that was a bad play. That was sarcasm. So that inflection allowed, I just created my own little sentiment analysis and figured out that it's deeper than just the script. So it adds context to conversation. And again, that's a, that's not Typically an AI thing, if you remember IBM and Twitter partnered up to pull an inflection out of tweets, that's that's along those lines. But that's a very expensive venture, and it's usually something that's done personally by somebody that we assign to vet through that. Uh, image analytics, we do it every day. You tag friends on Facebook, you, you snap them, you tag friends in pictures on Instagram. Um, uh, an image analytics would also be the doctor that holds up the x-ray to say, yep, you got a broken elbow. So that's an, they're, they're making an analysis based on an image. Okay. Uh, again, we've got video analytics and voice analytics. So we were talking last night in class about counting how many cars are driving by our place. We're watching our ring camera pick up how many cars drive by and we're taking that analytics and saying, hey, we know 500 cars drive by in between 3 and 8 p.m. And then we look at how many cars have dogs or how many cars are vans or service vans or how many cars are um, trucks, big tractor trailers. You know, we're really not going to count them. But so we can break it down and come up with uh, numbers to either support our hypothesis, if we're looking to grow the organization and we want more traffic, which is what we need to do. And with voice analytics, it's another uh, case in which we're pulling the inflection out where we'll have um, the famous here calls being recorded, you know, so we have that information that's um, being transcribed along with the audio recording of the call. So we can then determine that, you know, another layer of, um, of synthesizing when we're collecting that particular data and then data mining is you just go all out you're just drilling you're drilling till you find something and you keep going down and down and down like Tawana said again about the onion we just keep going down and down and down and down until we find something that we want 
Um, it helps us develop a predictive model, okay, because we're, um, we're finding things in which we're making correlations in a correlation analysis, which we haven't done previously. Um, but it's a very expensive and time consuming process. So we need to have the means and the software to do that. So not a lot of us are in a position to be data miners, but there are organizations that you can sub out that will do that at a pretty hefty fee. So that's the different type of um, analytics that we look at. And when uh, we're going to just jump into uh, presenting and how we show our findings of, of our data and our analysis. So um, biggest rule of thumb, and I'm not referring to the rock band KISS, but KISS, keep it simple. Okay, keep it simple. Don't worry about the fancy graphics. Don't put a ton of colors in there. Keep it very simple. Um, and the easier it is for the customer to read, the easier it is for us to explain, and the easier it is for us to show and convince that there's trends in which need to be acted upon. So good or bad. So we're the data architect. We build it together. So we want to make sure that it's telling the story we want it to tell. The adage, remember, a picture is worth a thousand words. So that's um, the basic overview. And uh, if you get an opportunity, and it really helps with this particular um, audio here, is that look at slide 21. And we've got two um, different types of charts. We've got a pie chart. We've got a bar chart, right? The pie chart is really a good looking chart. It's got different categories. It's a little busy, um, but it's broken down uh, different colors, and a lot of arrows and leader lines going to these uh, individuals. And then on the right, you got a pretty vanilla bar chart. So if I was to ask you, tell me, look at the chart, the pie chart, the really fancy pretty pie chart, and tell me which job category pays the most. I will guarantee you, if I ask you that same question and tell you, look at the chart on the right, which category pays the most, you immediately look to the far right and find that, um, that uh, software engineers are paid the most. We're in the upper left in the chart on the, uh, the Google chart. It's just really hard to pick up. So. Keep it simple. It's not as pretty. It's not as flashy, but it tells a much better story. Okay. The old saying, it's not about the sizzle. It's about the steak, right? So the, it, when you, somebody's walking by you with, you know, if you go to like uh, Chili's and they're walking by you with one of these sizzling hot steak fajitas, and the smell and the sound, it's like, man, that's going to taste so good. Um, and that kind of gets you primed. And then the steak gets there. And that's why you're there. You're there for the steak. The steak you don't have, maybe initially you do, but you don't have the same emotional high as you do as it's kind of, you know, being whizzed by your head at the table. Uh, and you're hungry and you can smell it and you can hear it. And you're thinking, man, that's going to taste so good. So. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure that your presentation tells your story, but you don't want to have your presentation be all sizzle and no steak. Okay. So um, from a numbers perspective, when we're presenting data, you always want to make sure that you're not distracting your presentation by having people sitting there and like starting Look in the count. Wait a minute. No, how many zeros? No. So you want to eliminate your zeros. No zeros. Just use commas to show the difference, right? Shoot, I mean, show commas to show the tens and the one hundreds columns. Um, and uh, never use decimals. Okay. You got to round up or round down, but you got to do it consistently. So if you're looking at the example on the um, the PowerPoint, twenty four forty nine is going to be twenty four bucks. 24,495 is going to be 25. So but be consistent there. So don't raise it when it looks good and lower it when it looks better. Um, but be consistent and always have your uh, roundups to 
both either always round up or always round down. And then the um, when you're aligning your data, I know a lot of folks like to have it very symmetrical and in the center of a column. But always um, you want to have you want to do a right align for your output, your information, and you want to do a left align for the column that's uh, aligned with that, your column that is parallel to it. So in this particular case, it's Androids versus uh, and the visits and you're at 2319, you know that lines up, but you're, you're creating that gap. So you want to have left align for column A and right align for column B. So you get that, you've got that difference, so you get that wedge. So very important here, most common types of charts. You got your spark line, your bar, your line, and your pie. And I strongly recommend you jump on your PowerPoint and look at these because you're going to incorporate some of these in presentations. You're going to incorporate all of these in presentations throughout this program and not just the data program, but in all the programs. Um, now, your spark line, you can jam in and to a tight place. But the problem with the spark line is that it doesn't tell a great story. Like if you're looking at the spark line and you look at the second chart down, I mean, the second um, um, line down uh this is the upper left spark line chart you can see there's a huge deficiency maybe about two inches in um because it's very compressed you don't have an opportunity to see okay what period was that and why now if i look down at my line chart i can see very clearly what my progression sat where my peaks where my valleys were where i started to drop where i picked up and then uh, on my axis where i can label that I can have, that could be weeks, months, days, years. Um, I can see that from week to week what I did. And then I can also then grab data from the previous year and throw it in there. And I can do, I can do a comparison, an overlay comparison of year to year, uh, year to date versus year to year. So, and I can continue to do that with many different overlays. And I can go back, you know, three, four, five years and see where my progression line and each different progression, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna have a different color. So, and we also talked about never skew the data when you're reporting out and by skewing it. So if you look down at our line chart here and I'm presenting this, I can say on December 1st, we were at 6.5% and on June 13th, we were at 18.1%. So during this time period, we had an increase of about 15% or about um, 12%, right? So if I'm an astute, if this is something that I'm presenting to a board that I'm looking to get investors, or I'm looking to get somebody that's going to invest, you know, both either fiscally or emotionally as a stakeholder, I'd ask the question, hey, um, how come you were like down to zero? like in previous months, why aren't you reporting on that data? So you've got to paint the whole picture. So you just can't say, hey, this first dot here on December 11th, this first point, data point. Yeah, that's where we're going to start. December of 2011, that's where we're going to start. Where you need to start from the beginning because you're presenting all that data in the in the graph. In the, spar in the line chart, you're presenting it all. So you've got to talk about it. Um, and when you skew your data, people start to think the information you're giving them is, you know, slanted in a way which it's going to benefit you. So um, these, this uh, bar chart is also something where you're going to show the differences. So in a bar chart, you can see, like, the obviously the farther out is the most based on the axis aligned underneath it. And, and it will typically start to slant down and, you know, like a 45 degree angle. Um, and in particular bar chart we're using in the, the PowerPoint, uh, you can highlight, uh, like for example, the USA has the most output in widgets. So USA is emboldened and it's the, the, it, the chart is a different color. The, uh, the category bar is a different color than the other um, countries. So that should, bar chart is when you really want to take advantage and show the difference in how, how you're either separating yourself from the other categories or separating an item from the other categories. 
And last but not least is a bar chart. Never want to use more than four items in a bar chart, four variables, because your whole point of a bar chart is to show how um, the disparity sits in with the other uh, variables. So, for example, in the chart, the bar chart we're using, or the bar um, pie chart we're using, I'm sorry, in the um, example in the PowerPoint, right? So pie part pie chart we've got three categories here we've got facebook twitter and youtube and um we're looking at the percentage of our audience from social media and you can see on the chart 71 percent are youtube folks that access us through youtube 29 percent access us through facebook and 0.2 percent access us through twitter so the things that immediately draw to my to my eye our man, YouTube's huge. It's grabbing a huge chunk, and Twitter's like next to nothing. So if I was throwing money at an advertiser based on this chart, I could say with 100% conviction, I'll buy into YouTube. Yeah, Twitter's not working for our audience. So you again, if I had 10 categories in there, like if I went with that bar chart and had uh, USA, France, the UK, Russia, Germany, Portugal. So I have five or six different categories in here and it starts to get muddy or you might have a lot of small, like, let's say, for example, we use Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, um, LinkedIn. Uh, and, and, you know, as Bill Belichick calls it, what, Snapface, whatever, kind of, or, or um, my snap or my face. So my MySpace and Facebook combined. But so if we added a bunch of variables in there, you're really kind of cutting these wedges down and they're not carrying the value, the optical value of telling your story. Like we know YouTube's the way to go. We know um, because it yields 71% of the return. So those are just things which to consider um, when we're using the chart, how you want to use them and some rule of thumb here between a spark line and a, and a um, spike chart or a line chart, which you can call it either. But both are goods for showing trends. They're both goods for showing trends. You're not going to get as much data in your trend line with a spark as you are with a line, okay? Um, a spark line uses a lot less space. You can condense it. You can drop it in, even cite it in, a, in an essay. Or a line chart, you really kind of have to dedicate a much more significant amount of space to show the actual kind of breadth of the chart. Uh, a line can highlight specific, uh, a data point in a much more clear fashion. And again, going back to, we can throw overlays in there. We can go year to year um, where you can position a spark line right next to the data we're talking about. So you can drop it right in there and have into an essay and throw it in and have it cited where it's going to essentially solidify your argument that you're making so um line charts are used to track changes over short and long periods of time so you know you see your ebbs and flows your peaks and valleys um and there when you have broad or small um and again it depends on the axis how far if you want to do if you want to have this you can do it by month, you can do it by week, you can do it by year, you can do it by day. Um, you know, the, the, the shorter amount of time you have in the axis, the less movement you'll see on the chart. It's just going to be more of a kind of a, a maybe a flat line and less of an EKG. Um, so you want to be mindful of that. So if you're looking at weeks or you're looking at months, it'll give you a kind of a more vivid snapshot of what's going on in a particular area you can focus on to see why do we drop off in sales this month and compare it to the following month where we were pretty consistent what happened well maybe it was the weather let's go back to wine wags and crafts maybe it was the weather maybe it snowed maybe it rained a lot um maybe that uh, we had um i don't know too many we were we our hours were um, adjusted because there were a lot of people on vacation so we weren't open as frequently as we were we can just take the data we're looking at here and align it with a particular point in time a period and say this was happening then 
and this is what we, these are the results when this was happening this is what my chart looked like when this was happening this is what my chart looked like and as you're building that line chart you can see um the the increases and decreases along the way and you know it works um, so going over to our bar and pie charts um our bar part our bar chart is very good for showing the difference of things so again it delineates itself from others um the categories kind of speak for themselves um we want to again keep a three to four max uh, number of items in a pie chart. Um, and when we're looking at um, a pie chart, we want to have what we're, we, we want to show in a pie chart uh, kind of a snapshot where it's not, it could be something that's very fluid, where next month when we look at our data, it could be YouTube is 69% of our audience and Facebook is uh 33 percent of our audience um or that wouldn't accurate add up that's bad math so that'd be 30 percent of our audience and then we would have one percent is twitter so we can you know if we're making that adjustment we can then say all right we'll, we'll look at the pie chart again next month where if you have a line chart or even a bar chart you can grab a more accurate kind of uh time stamp of what's happening the the pie chart is best when we're just trying to compare the whole. Okay, so we're kind of trying, after we've gotten the results from our data, that's the snapshot. That's just the, the picture of everything. Um, and then our bar graphs are used to compare things between different groups that will change over time. So uh, same as we're doing in our pie chart, our bar chart is consistently going to move and shift and adjust um, based on productivity and outcome, based on the data we're putting in there. So it's a, it's a more, less of a snapshot and more of a kind of a running total. Um, and here is our do's and don'ts section of the uh, evening here. So my favorite line, and I did come up with this one, is leave 3D to the movies. They look very cool when you're putting three, 3D charts together, but they're very difficult to read. Um, use, a, uh, use colors that are um, intended colors. Use, have, um, if we're going to do a Netflix or if we're going to do a uh, YouTube, we're going to be red. If we're going to do a uh, Home Depot, we're going to be orange. If we're going to do excuse me, Facebook, we're going to be blue. So the branded colors, something we're comparing, we're going to use those. But we're also for branding, if we're using data that's information that we're not, that we're not using, I mean, that we're, that's not a big branded corporation, then we be consistent and we use that same color the entire way. So we continue to use the color that will uh, align with a particular um, individual item. So if we're going to, if we're going to, um, for example, look at data that is of, we'll say, programs. Let's say we're going we're gonna to analyze three different programs. We're going to analyze a Bio 120, a Bio 200, and a Bio 300, okay? So my Bio 120 is going to be all purple, all the way through all my presentations. My Bio 120 is going to be purple. My Bio 200 is going to be red, um, and my Bio 300 is going to be blue all throughout. So, and the correlation is obviously primary colors. You take red and blue together, you get purple, right? So, but we're going to be consistent and kind of stay and not have a real wide scope of a uh, picture of, of colors just to go like to get, again, to keep it simple. We're going to just stay with some basics. So, um, and the last thing is we, we, we keep it simple, but we don't want what you see is what you get. We don't want to adjust the axis to minimize or maximize the appearance of the findings. So we don't want to skew the data. We don't want to show a smaller window sample where after that window sample, if we're looking at a line chart, after that window sample, it just totally um, ski slopes right down. And before that, 
it might have been higher and came down. So we're, we're catching it just on the lip up. So we could have started up here and we were falling, falling, falling. And then we catch it and the lip up. So we're saying, you know, we're going to we're going to capture this piece of data right here and show you this consistent trend over 11 months, but then stop. And then we realize on the 12th, 13th, 14th month, it just totally ski, you know, uh, ski sloped. So it's it's not accurate. It's not truthful. And we want to show the entire picture so we can identify and be truthful and say, yeah, we're, we were struggling. And I don't know why we were struggling, but let's look at this point in time and go back and look at the data to see what we were doing that caused us to have that little hiccup where we started to pick up. Is it the economy? Is it our product? Is it our, is it our marketing? Is it our communications teams? So um, always be truthful and don't, don't adjust the access to work to your advantage. Um, you want to have it. So um, all cards on the table, full disclosure, transparency. These, this is my number. These are my numbers. These are, this is my outcome. So I think with that, we'll wrap tonight. Um, I don't believe I have anything else. Um, uh, as far as your assignments go, you got your discussion question this week. You've got your writing assignment. And to recap, our writing assignment is what could they have done differently? What would have worked? What are your suggestions? Again, these are pieces that will go into your final presentation. Okay. Um, any questions, you know where to reach me, shoot me a text, send me an email. Um, have a great weekend. And don't forget to get your uh, final project team lead. Get it into me so I can look at it and get it back to you guys in I will talk to you in the next few days. So thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.